Hmm, I need a little bit more red in the lips. Maybe a little bit more blush in the eyes. <laughs> Silly me. This isn't a makeup palette. Hey yo, back at it again with another tutorial, and this time we're talking about color. For the longest time, color was something I really struggled with, and even to this day, it's something that I really don't want to think about. For me, dealing with color is the least enjoyable part of the video making process. I just want to shoot, edit a sequence, and then deliver. Unfortunately, not all shoots will have consistent lighting, nor will I always remember to set my white balance appropriately for the scene. So at bare minimum, some color correction is always going to be needed, and if the project calls for it, then a little bit of color grading. To make it easier for myself, I bought this. This is the X-Rite Color Checker Passport video. Open this up and inside we have a grayscale for highlights, midtones, and blacks. On the opposite page, we have four columns of chips, one for color, one for skin tones, and two more for white, black, and the grays in between. Now, after we do some magic, we have a white balance card, and this is for focusing. But who cares about that when you got autofocus, am I right? Okay, so how does one use this to get perfect colors? Before we move on, I just want to mention that this color checker can be used with any editing software that allows for masking and manipulation of hue versus hue. But if you have an editing program that supports color checkers like this, it's even easier. I'll show you both techniques, starting with the easy one. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve with some footage from an interview I shot. You could see the subject holding the color checker close to her face. Anywhere within the frame is fine, but close to the face is a safe area. On the bottom of the screen, we're going to go to our color workspace, so that way we could adjust exposure and color. Let's first adjust our exposure to the way that we want it. Okay, that looks pretty good, but we could see that the image is favoring green heavily. If we look to our waveform, we could see that the green channel is way above the red and blue channels. But that's okay, that's why we have the color checker here. First thing we're going to do is come over here to the left middle of the screen and click on this tab called Color Match. You could see a color chart pops up, but because there are different color checkers in existence, we want to make sure that we have the right one selected. So we'll come over here to the top right of this window, click the drop down menu, and look for our color checker. We're using the X-Rite Color Checker Passport video. And you could see the color chart now mimics exactly what she's holding, except it's just rotated. Next thing we want to do is come down to the bottom left of the preview window for this drop down menu where we will see color chart. We click on that and we could see a color chart overlay pop up on the preview. Now this overlay's orientation matches what we see here in the color match window. But as I mentioned before, what she's holding is rotated. All we have to do is adjust these corners so that way the overlay matches what she's holding. And we just want to make sure that the boxes of the overlay are within the color chips of the passport. After that, all you have to do is come down here to the color match window, and you'll see this button here called match. Click that. And you could see we have perfect, accurate colors. If we go up to our node and click this number on the bottom left, we turn on and off the effect. So if we turn it off, that's the before, that's after. Perfect color. Now let's say your editing software didn't have this feature where you could just place an overlay over the color checker and then click a button and then you get perfect colors. You could still use the color passport to get perfect colors. Here's how. So we'll reset everything except the exposure adjustments that we made earlier. So the first thing we want to do is isolate only the color chips on the color passport. We want to ignore the skin tones, the whites, the grays, and all that. So the way we're going to do that is create a mask using our power window. If you have Premiere Pro or Final Cut, you could just use an opacity mask but all we're trying to do is isolate these color chips. Here in DaVinci, we have to click this highlight button, and now all we see are the color chips. The next thing we want to do is open up our vector scope, however you want to do that in your editing software. 
Now the vectorscope is showing all these color chips and where they fall on the color wheel. These boxes are our targets of what the colors are actually supposed to be. So we have red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. The way we're going to push these colors towards the respective boxes is by using hue versus hue in our curves. Now on this curve line, we have to set points for our red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. Easiest way to do that in the DaVinci workspace is to click on these colored dots down here. Red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta. And you could see points appeared on the curve. Now I keep saying curve, but all you see is a straight line, but once I move these points around, it's gonna get curvy. Now moving these points up and down is going to move the corresponding color inside the vector scope. So if we want to get our red chip to look more red, we just gotta push this more towards that red box. And then we'll do that for all the other chips. Okay, that looks pretty good. All the color chips are pointing towards their respective boxes of what they're supposed to be. Now, if we put this away and then undo our mask, we have perfect colors again. Before, after. Now, when we compare this image using this technique to our image from before using the color match feature, you could see that this image is still on the green side, but because we used a color chart, we are definitely a lot closer than we were before, and color grading from here should be much easier. So now that we know our colors are very close, let's see how we could correct this even more. Looking at our vector scope, we see that the green is more saturated than the magenta, which explains why there is an overabundance of green in our image. So let's just dampen that green a little bit. Let's go back to our curves. We'll go to hue versus saturation. We'll click on green, so that way green is selected. And we're just going to pull this down until the image starts looking pretty good. Keep going, keep going. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's up the saturation just a little bit to compensate for the loss of green, and that looks perfect. This X-Rite Color Checker Passport for video saves my footage every single time. Especially when I'm filming interviews, I usually film with four cameras, two cameras pointing at each subject. And before I had this, not only was it a pain to color correct just one camera, but it was even more of a pain to color match all four cameras. But now it's a lot faster, it's a lot easier, and more reliable than setting a custom white balance per camera. Now, I only went over two techniques on how to use this to get accurate colors, but you could literally use the entire color passport to get the colors that you want. Being that this column of color chips has the most color information, that's probably going to be the most accurate, but you could go by highlights, midtones, and blacks. You could do it for skin tones, or you could use the white balance card inside here to set a custom white balance in camera. For what it is, a piece of plastic that looks like a makeup palette, it's pretty expensive. But for what it does, it's priceless. You can find a link to the X-Rite Color Checker Passport video in the description below. As always, you can find my complete gear list down there as well. If you want to check out some more tutorials and camera hacks, check out these two videos. Or you could click right here and subscribe to my channel and binge watch everything I've done. This is Kevin Mendoza. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.